how many of you know Gus was a incredible athlete and he was a superb uh, tennis player which I wasn't aware of until he called me one late afternoon and he said uh, Bob we've got we're missing a fourth for a doubles game I understand you play tennis and uh, would you are you available would you will would you be willing to join us so I said yeah sure so uh, I went uh, and joined him, and uh, he had two of his buddies that he played tennis with quite frequently. And uh, within the first five or six minutes, I realized that I was in a game that I was not ready for. <laughs> the ball was like zooming, and uh, they were hitting so hard. And Gus finally walked over to me, and he said, Bob, stay back from the net because you're going to get killed. <laughs> <laughs> he never called me about tennis again after that. Um, but I had the opportunity to uh, sit and interview Gus, actually, a couple years ago for a project that I've been working on, on Newark history. And um, we, uh, Gus had on in one of his uh, signature beautiful white sweaters with collar. And uh, he was very relaxed in his office, and we sat and talked for two and a half hours, uh, which is all on videotape, and someday will be in the Newark Library for others to see. Uh, but during this uh, discussion that we had, uh, he began by recounting how he got to uh, become the head of the first uh, urban coalition in Newark. And he, as he told the story, he said uh, he was working for the Legal Defense Fund at the time. And uh, he was on a trip, actually, for work uh, somewhere in South Carolina at an airport. And suddenly, he's being paged. Uh, you know, Gus Henningberg pick up a phone and so on. So he picks up the phone. And on the phone is uh, Jim Pauley who uh, ran the Urban League in Essex County at the time. And Paulie says to Gus, uh, I've got here with me uh, uh, Malcolm Talbot, who was then the provost of Newark Records, and Don McNaughton, who was the CEO of Prudential. And uh, we want to convey to you that uh, we have decided that we have the best job in the world for you. Uh, and we want you to sign on immediately, and that is to become the first president and CEO of a new urban coalition. And Gus says, you know, this is really crazy. And, you know, I'm here, I'm enjoying my job, I like what I do. Uh, so, you know, I'll see you guys at another time. I got a plane coming, and thank you very much. And that was the end of that conversation. So uh, as Gus tells the story, when he got to Newark Airport on the way home, there's Jim Pauley, Malcolm Talbot, and Don McNaughton meeting him at the airport. And uh, they said, you know, sit down, Gus. You know, we've got to talk. And uh, they said, look, this is the most important thing that can happen in Newark. We, see, we need somebody who can work with the business community, who can work with the community, and get some important things done in this city. And uh, Gus says, well, where's the staff? Where's the money? We'll, we'll do all of that. Don't worry about that. And Gus actually signed on. And uh, the rest is a remarkable history. Uh, but he, uh, he became the head of the Urban Coalition. And uh, as these coalitions actually began to spring up and the, there was actually the first one was in New York City and then in Detroit and Newark and Cleveland and cities around the country uh, few if any could have matched the success and the influence that emerged in this coalition uh, in a relatively short period of time because of Gus's work Someday, uh, I think somebody will probably write a book about Gus to really tell the, uh, the details of this remarkable person. Uh, when I 
did this interview and after uh, having this extensive discussion about many of the various things that he was involved in, uh, that was the point at which I have referred, I began to refer to, to Gus as a one-man movement because uh, in a sense, he really was uh, a force that seemed to be leading thousands of people. Uh, he had the passion of multitudes. Uh, he had the wisdom of the best of our historic leaders. Uh, and in some way, it seemed like he was really part of a regiment and not uh, very often an organization that did not have a huge staff that did not have a membership base, but had the ability, because of his talents and his skills, to work and pull together so many different forces in the community to make things happen. Um, in a period of decades, uh, uh, one would have to first of all say that Gus actually changed the opportunity structure of the construction industry in Newark and beyond. Now, this is not a simple thing to do. And uh, you don't do it just by demonstrating and, or even having meetings. But uh, Gus, as he told me in this interview, he said, I learned a very important thing while I was working on the, uh, on the construction issue. I learned that the marches can fade away, the edicts from the Human Rights Commission to, to the unions to do better, they can wait it out, they'll be gone. He said, but if you learn how to mess with the money, <laughs> things will happen. And today, the enforcement powers for affirmative action are in the Treasury Department of the state and not in the human, the human rights division because of Gus Henningberg, because Gus made that happen because it was the only way in which you could mess with the money. Gus also, as you know, changed the whole structure of the way in which jobs as well as concessions and uh, the economic benefits of operating an airport were parceled out. And uh, the story is, uh, I'm sure, will be told many, many times. But uh, as many of you probably know, uh, when Gus began the campaign at Newark Airport, the only concession that African Americans had was a shoeshine stand. Uh, owned by a family in Irvington. Uh, today, there are not only hundreds of businesses that are owned in airports, particularly Newark Airport, but there are, as in, in 2008, uh, the last count that I had, there were at least over 700 black-owned businesses in airports throughout the country, and some of them as major successes, uh, franchises, uh, uh, large networks of businesses because of his work. Uh, Martin Luther King uh, is known most of all for the moral and religious preachments that he made uh, for us to become a better society. Uh, but he should also be known for the enormous advocacy he made for economic integration, for economic fairness, for a reality in which everyone could participate in the economic life of this society. Gus is at the vanguard of the march for that dream, for that kind of dream. Uh, and I think if Gus were here today, he would say, uh, we've did a lot, but more needs to be done. Thank you.